Happy Sabbath, family. Here are today's announcements and upcoming events. Mount Calvary's Bliss presents New Beginnings on Friday, April 1st at 7 p.m. The presenter is Cecile Moody Hill, and you can join us by using the Zoom meeting ID of 849-7745-4683. Because we are bold, we love, we interact, we share, we are sisterhood. A woman in prayer. When a woman seeks God, she lays her soul bare like a tree in autumn, is a woman in prayer. Through Jesus, she makes her supplication to him, the father of all creation. To him who divided the darkness and light, to him who gave the sparrow flight. Attentively he listens, God knows she's sincere. And if she cannot speak, he interprets her fear. When a woman seeks God, there's a trembling of the earth, hope and healing, a miracle at birth. She breathes into a soul that which it lacks, then praises him for his mighty acts. When a woman seeks God, she transforms the air. More precious than a ruby is a woman in prayer. Attention all married couples, we'd like to showcase your wedding anniversaries, so please submit your anniversary dates and how many years of marriage to communications at mtcalvarysdatampa.org. Please do so as soon as possible. So it's been a while since we've eaten together, laughed together, fellowship together, and we miss you. That's why this is our special invitation to the Spring Family and Community Fun Day. Free fun, free food, free stuff. You know you want to come. We're taking the fellowship outside. Free day is Spring Family and Community Fun Day, March 27th, 12 to 4 p.m. Bring on the fun. Attention everyone. We need volunteers for our Spring Family and Community Fun Day. We need volunteers at the food court, a setting up crew, a cleaning up crew, volunteers for games, and registration.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it. God has been good to us during this week. And I know we are up for a treat in his presence, worshiping our maker and our king. To our visitors who are in house and those who are online and our viewers, this is the place that you are going to experience a memorable experience today. God is good. He is worthy to be praised. When we look over in Ukraine and see the, the devastation going on, we are experiencing here a beautiful Sabbath rest without any disturbance. So we need to give God thanks for his goodness and his mercy and lift our brothers wherever they are worshiping under whatever circumstances. My desire, if you are visitors or viewers online and you are looking for a home church, a place where you can come to worship, choose Mount Calvary. This is a place that God would have you to be. God bless you and have a wonderful experience and a memorable Sabbath rest.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. I don't know about you, but I feel like the presence of God is in this place. And we want to invite you, and we're going to meet him at the throne of grace. Amen. Bow your heads as we pray. Most kind, righteous, and eternal Father, we just want to pause in the middle of our service just to give you thanks. To acknowledge that you are the creator. You woke us up this morning. You clothed us in our right minds. And you have brought us here so we can have a high time in Zion. Dear Lord, we realize that we are absolutely nothing without you. You have sustained us all week through the tempestuous storms that have <laughs> driven. We see to our left, to our right, disasters, natural disasters. We see war, rumors of war. We see them right here in our own neighborhoods. Killing sprees, acts, killings of selfishness, foolishness even. But eternal God, we are reminded and we are assured that you are our Father. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us. And we come here today boldly proclaiming that promise. We want to thank you for what you have done for us, what you are going to do for us. We pray and we ask you for the forgiveness of our sins. Dear Lord, we realize that we are men and we are feeble. But dear Lord, you have the power to forgive our sins and to help us to walk along the straight and narrow way. Dear Lord, be with those that are sick among us. There are many of that we cannot name at this time, Father, but we pray that you will be with them. They might have family around them, but they can still feel alone inside. Eternal God, send your spirit to comfort them. Be with them in their different various stages of illness. Not only physically, dear Lord, mentally, financially, wherever it may be, Father, and dear Lord, whatever other ailments they might face. Dear Lord, we want to pray and we ask for the general membership of our church. Dear Lord, we are far dispersed, but dear Lord, you know each and every one of our names. And you look after us, so we want to thank you for that. We pray at this time for our pastor as he comes to break the bread of life for us. Dear Lord, give him words to challenge us to live better lives so that we may be closer drawn to you. Dear Lord, that is our hope and that is our desire. Dear Lord, if we don't have 10, 15 years left on this earth, help us to make our calling and election sure now. Dear Lord, because we realize that time is fleeting and we are weak. We cannot sustain ourselves, but help us, help us to hold on to your unchanging hand so that when you come in the clouds of glory, Whatever that may mind now, five minutes from now, or later on, help us to be ready so that when you come, you will call our names and we might be there with you in glory. This is our prayer and this is our plea. In the matchless name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Good morning again. This is a time that we turn our attention to our pocketbooks. We'll have several avenues through which we can give. We can give online, cash apps. You can come and drop your offering at the church between now and 1 p.m. We have two boxes at the back of the church. You can drop your tithes and offering in those two boxes. And to our friends online, you can give through the online portal. You are part of our worship experience. So give so we can advance ministry. And to our members, you have done a tremendous job. This is for sure. April will be our last mortgage we would have complete the mortgage on paying off and you must be commended for your systematic and consistent giving during the life of this uh, mortgage so god bless you and may god keep you and as we continue to give 
We have two projects coming. We have the roof and we have the AC. So these are the two projects that we will continue to work on after we finish paying our mortgage. So continue to give systematically. And we can give through MG365. That is, 365 days giving a dollar. And if you choose, you can give a dollar per day or you can give it all in once. Whatever method you choose to use, may God continue to bless you as you give. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the giving of your children. May you continue to give us all that we need so we can return that which belongs to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. I have a card to read today. In our hearts, love lives on and nothing beautiful is ever forgotten. Thank you to Mount Calvary Church family for your prayers and support in our time of grief. May God continue to bless and keep you all. And this is from the Booker family. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. I hope you're doing well. Let's get ready for today's story. And here we go. The name of the story is called A Brave Girl. It's about this little girl who was very brave. I'm not gonna tell you her name now. I think that you will be able to guess her name later on. So let's go ahead with the story. So this little girl lived with her family. She had parents and an older brother. And one day the family had a baby boy, a beautiful baby boy. She loved her baby brother very much, but there was a problem for this family. Now the Pharaoh who was the king at that time didn't like Hebrew children. So he made a law to get rid of all baby boys. So this mother loved her baby boy very much. She said, no way am I gonna let the Pharaoh get rid of my baby boy. So she took care of him. She kept him as quiet as she could. But as he got older, he started to make baby noises and he started to play and he was crying. So she said, you know what? I'm gonna do something to save my baby boy. So she decided to make a basket and she put tar in the bottom of the basket. And then she covered the basket. She put nice um, blankets in the basket. She put the baby in the basket and then she took it down to the river. And the baby's older sister went too. So she told the, baby, the baby's sister, let's hide him in the river so that no one will see him. Can you guess what her name is now? I think you can guess. If you said Miriam, you are right. Yes, her name was Miriam. And the baby boy, can you guess his name? If you said Moses, you are right. So this little girl was Moses' older sister. So unlike other little girls, other little girls would sometimes when their mommy tell them to do something, they'll say, okay, mommy, and then forget about it or do whatever they wanna do. So. Mommy told Miriam to watch over her baby brother, but don't stay too close to the basket, go far away from the basket. So she wade through the water, she hide behind some of the bushes that you're seeing in the picture, and she watched over her baby brother. She didn't go and play with her friends and forget about her baby brother. So as she was watching over the baby brother, the princess came with her maids to the river. 
and she saw this little baby. She opened the basket and she said, oh my goodness, look at this cute little baby. He must be a Hebrew baby. Wow, I think I like him. He is so cute. And Miriam saw that and then she went up to the princess and she said, shall I call a Hebrew nurse for you? Maybe that person can take care of the baby for you. And the princess thought about it and she said, yes, go call a Hebrew nurse. I'm going to give him to the Hebrew nurse to raise for me. So Miriam went back to her mother and she said, mom, you wouldn't believe what happened. And she told her mother the story and um, her mother went to the princess and the princess says, I will pay you to take care of the baby for me. I want you to take care of this baby. He's such a cute little baby and I'm gonna pay you and no one will bother you. How do you think Moses and Miriam's mother felt? She was very happy. Miriam made a very wise decision. And later on, Miriam grew up and Moses grew up and you know the story about Moses and all the things that he did to save the Hebrew people. Um, remember when they were crossing over through the Red Sea? He put his, his stick, his rod down and, got, and prayed to God and God opened the Red Sea so that the Hebrews could march over. And after they got over to the other side and the sea covered all of Pharaoh's army, Miriam and Moses sang a song. Miriam created the song. She said, sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. They were very, very happy. You see boys and girls, one action that Miriam did helped to save Moses and helped to save the Hebrew people. What does the Bible tell us about this? The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. And that means if you love God, things are gonna work out for good for you. It may seem bad at first, some parts of it may seem bad, but God has a purpose for every little boy and girl who are listening to me right now. God had a purpose for Miriam and Miriam followed his purpose. She was very brave. She was very smart. So be like Miriam, boys and girls. Listen to what God tells you to do and follow his purpose. Thank you so much for listening to this story and I'll see you next time. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Can you help us sing that song today? We're just going to sing the song that gives praise and honor to God because he is so worthy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord.
and we give thanks to our God for all that he's done for us. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I know that everything that happens in our life, everything that we've done when we've been born, when we've been raised, how we've gone to school, everything that we, in our lives, our families, we have to owe it all to God because he is our creator. Hallelujah. He is our savior. Hallelujah. He is, he's just a mighty God. And I don't know about you, but I owe everything that I am. I could be so, somewhere else. God, we pray for the, the people in Ukraine and those who are suffering right now. But if it had not been for the grace of God, where we, where would we have been? Amen. So we want to lift them up, but we want to give God his due praise, saying we owe it all, God, to you.
believe that you owe everything in this world to Jesus. Just raise your hands and just say, all I have is yours. I owe it all to you, God, because you are so worthy. God, we give you all the praise. We give you all our worship. We love you, Lord. All I have. portion of your Holy Spirit we pray that you would take this which is on the written page and set it on fire and then we ask Lord that you would give us hearts to receive and ears to hear and to listen in Jesus name we pray Amen. Turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. And I will begin reading at verse number 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. The subject for today is where is Elijah? Where is 
Elijah. There can be little doubt in the span of prophetic history. The prophet Elijah claims a prominent place. It is accurate to, to assert that indeed the path and pattern of biblical prophecy would be weakened and sapped of its persuasive power were not for the presence of Elijah. Elijah the prophet, or if you will, Elijah the Tishabite, was a man driven by divine imperative and eternal summons. He was at once a soldier of the Lord who spoke forcefully to the heresy of heathen gods, a champion of the downtrodden and the disposition, and a man for whom miracles seemed to be a part of his makeup. Elijah is an engaging personality. Uh, this, this inhabitant of, of Jewish ascent was to be found most often clammed only in a leather lion cloth and girdled only in a coat made of hair. I do not know why I am so in, in, in engulfed in learning about Elijah, the antagonist of Ahab and the nemesis of Jezebel. He does not have the social awareness of that sycamore tree tender from Tekoa name Amos. He is not called upon to develop the, the hermeneutic uh, preaching skill like the clergymen of the cemetery known as Ezekiel. He does not possess the tender passion of that preacher named Hosea who, was fi who found himself housebound with a whore. He does not have any, any sadness or pity in his preaching, nor is there a tear in his testimony like unto the prophet Jeremiah. He never quite manages to engage himself in those flights of spiritual ecstasy, nor is he able to experience the seraphim in the temple of the Lord like the prophet Isaiah. Yet here is before us stands Elijah the Tishabite. Even this holy writing we call the Bible has no book which bears his name. There is not one line which comes from his pen. And yet, yet it is Elijah who is known as the chief of the prophets. Not Amos, not Ezekiel, not Hosea, nor any of, of the rest. Elijah is the chief of the prophets. God will use who he wants and when he wants and how he wants. Folk don't have to come up to our standards or meet our approval. God will use who he wants to use. And so the question for today is, where is Elijah? In a sense, Elijah is representative of the crisis we face in the matter of spiritual understanding how many persons are there in God's word uh, how many persons are there in God's word about whom we know part of the story but we do not know the whole story many of us we read the Bible and the spirit of prophecy as a means of finding a word which meets the moment but we need to read and to study to find that treasure that is hidden therein so this day, I refuse to end this series without finding out where is Elijah. Also, I want you and me to have a sense of closure to this series on Elijah. I want to know where is Elijah. As one, as, as one day Jesus inquires of his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And the response came that some say you are Elijah. Your behavior has some striking similarities to a man we knew as Elijah. You have a way of raising some questions and speaking some issues like a man we once knew as Elijah. You have a way of dealing with godless governments in a manner that we haven't seen since Elijah left. So the disciples were able to make the cross reference be, uh, from Jesus to Elijah and from Elijah to Jesus. But the question is, where is Elijah? 
Let's, let's review quickly the drama of the days of Elijah. In the book of Kings, suddenly there stands Elijah with a word from the Lord. We've seen Elijah standing before the people on Mount Carmel asking, why are you limping between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. But if Baal be God, serve him. We've seen Elijah rebuild an altar with 12 stones, one to, to, to represent each of the tribes of Israel, pour water on the altar and the stones, and then pray down fire from heaven. We've seen Elijah down by the brook at Cherith, where God sent the ravens to feed him day and night. Can you see him now? When, when heaven dispatched the first and only, to my knowledge, Meals on Wings program. Now you see him when the brook dries up. And God sends him down to the village of Zarephath with a widowed woman and her son. You've seen her empty barrel and her diminishing oil. But now the oil flows every day and her barrel will not run dry. Now we've seen Elijah uh, talking, to, talking to Ahab about, about the garden uh, Jezebel swindled and murdered for uh, and, to, and took away from Naboth. Elijah cries out, Ahab, you got your garden. You're not going to grow any flowers. Uh, you, uh, you, you got the deed, Ahab, but the deed has blood on it. And Ahab, the dogs are going to lick up your blood. And at the same spot that they looked up Nabob's blood. And the dogs are going to eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Now we, we've seen Elijah when one day the widow of Zarephath's son died. Elijah took him to his up, up, upstairs apartment, laid him out on the bed, stretched out over his body, over the dead boy's body. The Bible says he prayed three times over the body of the lad uh, because prayer changes things. I don't know what Elijah prayed, but I, but, I, but I can imagine he said something like this, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, whether will I go? Now we've seen Elijah hiding under a juniper tree saying, It is enough now, Lord. Take my life, for I am no better than my father. Enough is enough. But we also saw him leave the wilderness for the mountain because God was not through with him yet. God is not through with you yet. You're not too old. You're not worn out. If God can use anything, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, and speak through me. If God can use anything, he can use me. But the question is, where is Elijah? And before we move on, we must first understand the lessons to be, to be gained from Elijah's life. First, Eli Ahab calls Elijah the troublemaker of Israel. Elijah, you are disturbing my domain. Elijah, you're the trouble of Israel. Now the lesson is that a child of God is a troubler of the nation. Spirit of prophecy tells us that there's going to come a time where because of all the disasters and all of the trouble that's going on on the face of the earth, that folk are going to point to us and say that at those seven-day adventures, those Sabbath keepers and those Jews are the troublers of the world. Uh, believe you me, you will always be on a child of God on the opposite side of the fence. You will always be the odd person in the group. Some may call your names. But remember, what good is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? The old man, old rich man, he, he, he was on his dying bed and he had in his will that all of his money were to be placed in his casket. And so the day of his funeral, when they reopened the casket for the last viewing, his wife, with tears falling down her face and just crying and just crying, 
when she went up to the casket, she took a, she took a check out of her purse. And she put the check in between his, his hands where they were folded. And someone asked, why did you put a check in the casket? She said, he said he wanted all his money, but he didn't say how to put it in the casket. So I gave him a check. So to gain the whole world and lose your soul means nothing. Additionally, additionally, the life of Elijah instructs us that just at the right time, when you think it's over, God has something else to be done. When you think you've won the victory, there's another mountain to climb, another river to cross, another assignment to be completed, another enemy to face, another burden to bear, another cross to carry, another heartache to hold, another night to struggle through. Elijah's life also uh, says that when you think you run out of power, God has a way of letting you know you have more strength than you can even imagine. you got resources you can rely on. My Bible says, great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. My Bible says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. My Bible says the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? My Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. My Bible says fret not thyself because of evil doers neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. My Bible says fret thou fear not thou for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. My Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now Elijah's life informs us that when your well runs dry, God is still in charge of the water department. Matter of fact, matter of fact, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So no matter how dark your days, no matter how dismayal your night, no matter how bleak your future may be, God is still in the blessing business. So stop getting jealous. When your friends receive a blessing, you start praising the Lord because he's blessing them because he's not too far from your door. God, God has all kind of blessings. That he'll deliver them all different ways. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, uh, matter of fact, God said before you call, I'll be there. Sometimes the path of life can be mighty dry. Sometimes the showers of satisfaction uh, are delayed for more than a season. Sometimes the soul can lose its spiritual rage. But remember, God is still in charge of the waters of life. David said the wa his water ran dry. His sin, had, 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 he had to acknowledge his wrongdoing. He had to confess his, uh, he was, that he was born in sin and shaped in, in iniquity. David declared, thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And David didn't stop there, for he said, I once was young and now I'm old. But no matter how low the brook, no matter how many days my brook has run dry, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hmm. But I still want to know, where is Elijah? I don't know about you, but I've learned a lot from Elijah, and I'm sure there is more to learn. We may not be facing 450 prophets of Baal, but we will have some oppositions in our life. 
We may not be, be situated by the brook Cherith, but we will see the time when our well runs dry. We may not be physically hungry, but we may fall victim to spiritual malnutrition and need to make a visit to a widow's house for some biscuits and some blessings. We may never own a garden adjacent to the president's house, but somebody may try to take the flowers from your life and keep you from enjoying the fruits of destiny. We may never experience raising the dead, but we do know death is in our destiny. We do know that it can't be avoided. We do know that we can't go around it. We can't go over it because it is appointed once unto man to die. But after this, the judgment. Because my life and your life may have some similarities to Elijah's life. I want to know, where is Elijah? The good book says that Elijah asked Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I shall be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Well, here, I, I, I'm here to tell you, if you're going to make it through this Christian journey, if heaven is your destination, if you're looking and working for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you need a double portion. A double portion of God's love, a double portion of God's grace, a double portion of God's mercy, a double portion of God's justification, a double portion of God's Holy Ghost power. So where is Elijah? Some folks say that Elijah died like all of us will die. Some folks say Elijah is one of the, the two witnesses in Revelation chapter, thir chapter 11. Where is Elijah? Well, well, it is stated in the Bible that a chariot of fire and horses of fire, uh, the first transportation to heaven, came down from heaven and picked up Elijah. And he went by a whirlwind into heaven. Where is Elijah? Well, the last time anybody saw Elijah, he was in a conference on the Mount of Transfiguration. He's with Moses talking to Jesus. Elijah represents those who will be living on the earth when Jesus returns. We are told they will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Ah, uh, let me tell you something you need to stop listening to. The church will not be raptured before the time of trouble. Moses represents those who will, who will come forth from the grave at the resurrection of the just. Uh, let me tell you this too. Mom and dad are not in heaven. Your aunts and uncles are not in heaven. Uh, they're in the grave, resting from their labors. But there is a, there's a tradition that Elijah is still uh, alive, walking and working on the earth. Some Jews believe that one day Elijah will reappear and he will usher in the Messiah for the final uh, uh, redemption of mankind. Many believe that when, when they celebrate the Passover, they leave an empty chair by the door for Elijah to be invited in. Many are waiting for Elijah. But thank God we're not waiting for Elijah. Thank God we know that Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. We're waiting on Jesus. I'm waiting on Jesus, the one who will come and shall not tarry. I'm waiting. On Jesus, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. I'm waiting on Jesus, the one my mother said is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. I'm waiting on Jesus, my leaning post and, and my walking cane. I'm waiting 
on Jesus, my lawyer in the courtroom, my doctor in the sick room, and I got a new one from Mother Swartz. He's my mechanic on my body. I'm waiting on Jesus. He's coming with a shout. I'm waiting on Jesus. He's coming with the voice of the archangel. I'm waiting on Jesus. The trump shall sound and the dead shall rise. I'm waiting on Jesus. The trump shall sound. Then those who are alive and remain shall be caught up with the clouds to meet them in the air. I'm waiting on Jesus. The trump shall sound. We'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. I'm waiting on Jesus. Every eye shall see him. I'm waiting on Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. I'm waiting on Jesus. It does not appear what we shall be. I'm waiting on Jesus. Eyes, eyes have not seen, nor ears have heard what he has in store for us. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on Jesus. The song says, when peace, like a river, attendeth my way. When sorrow, like billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, tis well, tis well with my, with my soul.
As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I pray that it is well with your soul on today. But if not, those of you who are here, those of you who are out there listening to us, God has given you this day to make things right with him. Oh, I hope it is your desire that you want to go where Elijah is. That's in heaven. But you have to accept our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior. Those of you who are listening to us out there, you can go online and there's a pill card. You can complete the pill card and a Bible worker will get in touch with you. Those of you who are here, you have not accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, you just raise your hand. One of the ushers of the Bible works will give you a card for you to complete. And you can complete that and turn it in and a Bible worker will get in touch with you. Loving Father, we count it a privilege in your house of worship in a land of peace on today father we ask that you would search our hearts if there's anything in it that shouldn't be do surgery on us on today take it out lord fix us make us right cover us with the blood of your son jesus Forgive us of all of our sins and all of our shortcomings. And on this day, may it be written in the record book of life that we are clean and we are sealed by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. By way of announcements quickly, next, next Sabbath, next Sabbath, we will have Sabbath school in person uh, beginning, I heard, this morning at 9.50, but I thought we had said 10 o'clock. But anyway, we'll get the time and put it out there. It will be either 9.50 or 10 a.m. That's for adults and children. We opened up all of the Sabbath school uh, uh, classes uh, on, on next Sabbath. Uh, morning manna will begin at 8.15 on next Sabbath. 8.15 to, I believe, 8.45. Is it 8.45? 8.45. Um, I saw that there's children choir rehearsal immediately at the service. Uh, do not forget, please do not forget, on tomorrow at, uh, at 12 noon, our fun day starts with us and the community. Please come out and participate. And also tomorrow at 12 noon, CPR class will begin in the fellowship hall. And that is on tomorrow. Uh, this evening, uh, there is a bylaws committee meeting um, at 730. Uh, you can, it will be held at uh, Mount Sinai um, at 7.30 on this evening. I believe it says you can go on the conference YouTube or the conference web page and you can uh, watch it. And you can also participate because they will be giving uh, time for those who have questions, whether you are on there by YouTube or Facebook, you'll be able to ask questions uh, concerning the Constitution and the bylaws. If you miss this evening on April the 2nd, there will be one held at the same time, 730 at the Northside Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's for the Constitution and Bylaws Town Hall meeting that, that will be going on on this, uh, this evening. Um, I believe that's, oh, to our youth, to our youth, those of you who are in the, the youth class, I will apologize uh, for our church family, uh, for the condition that you found your classroom in. We are working on right now, we're going to move you, your class, to the choir room temporarily, just temporary, until we can uh, get your classroom squared away. So please uh, take my apology on behalf of the church for you finding your classroom in the condition that you have found it in. Please forgive us. Next Sabbath, right after service, we will have rehearsal for communion. Communion will take place here on Sabbath morning on April the 9th. So next Sabbath, we will have rehearsal uh, right after Sabbath service, rather, right after Sabbath. So let us stand. Sabbath school today is at 3, 
and our youth is at two. Last time, it will be at three o'clock. Those of you who have come, we want to thank you for joining us, and we pray that you were blessed throughout today, and may God continue to bless you. Loving Father, now we ask that your Holy Spirit and your angels would go with us, place a hedge around us, Bless us, Lord, that we will bless someone else, that we will spread your word to all in whom we come in contact with. And then our lives will reflect that which we speak to others about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Please wait to be directed out by our ushers. is a multi-issue grassroots community organization consisting of over 25 congregations throughout Hillsborough County. We are a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization founded and incorporated right here in Florida in 1988. Hope's mission is to promote justice, fairness, and the dignity of all people by engaging and training those people to responsibly and successfully act together to hold our officials accountable to improving the systems in our community. On March 28th, Mount Calvary, along with 25 diverse congregations across Tampa Bay, will unite 2,000 people at the Nehemiah Action to hold decision makers accountable for making changes in our community. We will be addressing increasing awareness to mental health services, re reducing adult arrests, racial profiling, and environmental concerns. Micah 6 verse 8 tells us what God requires of us. It's to do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. The Nehemiah action is just such an opportunity for us to respond to the call to do justice and also have a voice in our community. So on March the 28th, at 7 p.m., we'll be live at the Nativity Catholic Church in Brandon, Florida. There will also be a Zoom option. But whether you attend live or via Zoom, we will all need to register. So we desire for you to click on the description box below where the link is there for you to register. Don't wait to think about it. Go right now and register, whether it's to come live or to be there present via Zoom. Either way, we want you to respond to the call to do justice. And we hope and pray to see you there. Happy Sabbath, family. Here are today's announcements and upcoming events. Mount Calvary's Bliss presents New Beginnings on Friday, April 1st at 7 p.m. 
The presenter is Cecile Moody Hill, and you can join us by using the Zoom meeting ID of 849-7745-4683. Because we are bold, we love, we interact, we share, we are sisterhood. The date for the new member training session for the Deaconess Department has changed. The new date is Sunday, April 3rd, 2022 at 12 p.m. Please make a note of it. There will be an American Heart Association hands-only CPR class presented by Advent Health on Sunday, March 27th, 2022 at 12.30 p.m. at the Family and Community Fund Day. Please see LaToya Texera to sign up. So it's been a while since we've eaten together, laughed together, fellowship together, and we miss you. That's why this is our special invitation to the Spring Family and Community Fun Day. Free fun, free food, free stuff. You know you want to come. We're taking the fellowship outside. Free day is Spring Family and Community Fun Day, March 27th, 12 to 4 p.m., Bring on the fun. There will be a Tampa Stop the Gun Violence Crusade sponsored by the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Tampa. The theme is Ending Gun Violence Together. Join us at Reagan Park, Tampa, Florida on April 2nd, 2022 at 1 p.m. There will be music provided by the Tampa Citywide Gospel Choir with director Isaac Ruffin. There will also be free food with speakers Pastor Larry Roundtree, Pastors on Patrol, and a host of city officials and clergy. Be there. Two thousand twenty two Hope Nehemiah Action. Join two thousand people united for justice to address criminal justice reform, access to care for mental health and addiction, and environmental concerns on Monday, March twenty eighth, twenty twenty two, from seven PM to eight thirty PM at Nativity Catholic Church at seven oh five East Brandon Boulevard in Brandon. 33511 with Zoom option. The Zoom link will be attached to the Sway announcements via Flocknote. Please refer to the Flocknote bulletin for all announcements, links, and times. If you'd like to connect with us, please contact us at www.mountcalvarysda.org or visit us on Facebook and continue to watch us on YouTube at Mount Calvary SDA Tampa. And be sure to subscribe to our page. Have a happy Sabbath.